Welcome to our video series on more advanced features of Windows XP. In this video, we'll look at the control panel and add or remove program functions. Now I'm going to start talking you through the Windows control panel. You can access to the control panel through the Start menu, and then choose Control Panel. OK, here's the Control Panel. Yours may look similar to this, but you may have some slightly different options, because some installed software actually adds extra Control Panel options. But the fundamental options are going to be the same. Control Panel, as the name implies, allows you to control important parts of Windows XP. For example, there's accessibility options. Adjust your computer settings for vision, hearing, and mobility. You can add hardware, add or remove programs, administrative tools, and so on. There's a lot of power and flexibility available through the control panel interface. So first of all, I'll start talking you through some of these. And let's start with this one, add or remove programs. So double click to open it up. And this is how the Add or Remove Programs screen looks. And it does exactly what it says. It allows you to add programs to Windows XP or remove programs. Generally, for adding programs, you generally wouldn't use this screen. It's easiest to add programs just, for example, if you're installing off a CD-ROM, just put the CD in the drive, and the installation program will generally start automatically or the setup program, the installation program. Or if you download software off the Internet and, for example, save it to the desktop, then you just double-click it to start up the installation process and follow the prompts to go through the installation wizard, which will probably prompt you each step of the way. But for removing programs, OK, there are four sections here. And if we look at the Change or Remove Programs area, first of all, it lists all the software installed on your computer. And you have a number of sorting options. And I generally find that sorting by name works well. And then if you want to uninstall software, you just find the software you want to uninstall and scroll down if necessary. For example, let's say I wanted to uninstall Let's uninstall this piece of software, the MP4 Converter. Simply click on Remove. And actually, just before I do that, the benefit of uninstalling is that it frees up some space on your hard drive, because it removes the software. But in this case, you can see that it doesn't take a massive amount of space, just a bit over 7 megabytes. So it's not really a problem to leave it installed. But, as mentioned, it can save space, and also, some software runs automatically when you start your computer. And if you aren't using it any longer, you may as well uninstall it. Obviously, for purchased software, you do want to make sure you keep the original installable software or file so you can reinstall it at a later date if you wish. But if you want to remove it temporarily while keeping the original installable software, that would be fine. Another benefit of uninstalling software you don't use is that it makes your Start menu more manageable and easier to navigate. Because as you can see, after a while you can actually install so much software that it fills the screen and goes off the edge of the screen, which makes it very difficult, if not impossible, to navigate. So that's a further benefit. Of course, you can go to any software you don't use and just right-click and delete, but that doesn't actually delete the software. It just removes it from the Start menu. But that's another option. OK, so when you choose the software you want to uninstall, just click on it once to select, and click on Remove. Are you sure? Let's say yes. And it's done. OK. Sometimes, when you want to uninstall software, it may prompt you to remove shared files. And generally, when it asks whether I want to remove shared files, I usually say no, 
Those are files that have been installed that are sometimes used by other software. So if you remove shared files, it can cause other software that you want to work to stop working. So if you're asked regarding shared files, it's best to say no to removing them, so leave them in place. So that's pretty much how you can remove software. This screen gives you the option of adding new programs, but as I mentioned, you typically install new programs just by putting in the CD-ROM, and the installation process usually starts automatically. Or, if you've downloaded software, you just double-click the software you've downloaded to start the installation process. But it does give you a couple of options here. You see, add a program from CD-ROM or floppy disk, I'd say that floppy disks aren't particularly relevant anymore with modern computers, and you can just click there to install. Or you can add programs from Microsoft, which is essentially going to the Windows Update page, which is at update.microsoft.com. So that's another way of going to the Windows Update page. Okay, add or remove Windows components. Here, you can choose to add or remove what amounts to Windows accessories or, let's say, add-ons, which are part of Windows XP. So, they come with Windows XP, but they aren't part of the core functionality. And at the moment, you can see that Fax Services isn't installed. But if I want it, I can check that box. Indexing Services isn't installed, and so on. And if I want to uninstall Accessories and Utilities, I can just check that. So that's how you can install or uninstall add-ons to the core Windows functions. Once you've made your selections, you'll just click on Next, and it will start going through the installation or uninstall process. You may be prompted for the original Windows installation disk when you go through this process, so you may want to have that ready. Okay, the last part of this screen is Set Program Access and Defaults. You can choose which software is automatically used for certain tasks. So there's the Microsoft Windows configuration. If you were to select that, and you see that by default, it tends to use all the Microsoft software. So the web browser is Internet Explorer. Email program is my current Microsoft email program, and there's also Outlook Express. Media Player is Windows Media Player. Instant Messaging Program is Windows Messenger. So that's one configuration that clearly favors the Microsoft software. Another configuration is non-Microsoft, and what this is doing is setting up the default software for certain tasks, as I mentioned the default web browser, the default email program, the default media player, and so on. And by default, I mean the software that has priority with such tasks. For example, if you were to double-click a web address shortcut, the default web browser would open up, which would be, in this instance, Internet Explorer. But in the non-Microsoft configuration, it tries to use non-Microsoft programs as much as possible. So, web browser, CMonkey, which is part of Mozilla. Email program is CMonkey Mail. Media player is use my current media player. Instant messaging. Okay. However, if you choose custom, you can choose which software you want as default each step of the way. So, for web browser, for example, you can choose my current web browser or you can choose between whatever you have installed, Internet Explorer or CMonkey in this instance. Choose a default email program. Again, you can choose from whatever is installed on your computer. And the same with Media Player, Instant Messaging Program, and Virtual Machine for Java. You don't actually have any choices there. So, you may choose to use this area of the screen to set up default software for popular tasks such as browsing the web or picking up email. So, the Add or Remove Programs screen through the control panel is an important screen.
I would say in most cases, you'll be using this option to be removing software you've previously installed that you don't really use anymore. And you may want to uninstall it, as I mentioned, to free up space, to make the Start menu more manageable, or to stop certain software from running automatically when your computer starts. But this screen has further options, as you saw, which you may find useful in certain circumstances.